Have you heard about the parodying case? This 1947 movie unfolds a gripping tale filled with twists and turns that will keep you glued to your seat. As you watch, be prepared for a roller coaster of emotions from moments that'll make you laugh to shocking revelations and heart-wrenching scenes. In this courtroom drama, a woman finds herself accused of murder, setting the stage for a tense legal battle. But amidst the legal proceedings, buried secrets come to light, challenging perceptions and unraveling the truth. Have you ever watched this classic film? If so, what memories does it bring back? Share your experiences in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Keep watching to uncover the funny, shocking, and sad facts hidden within the parodying case. And remember, your cherished memories are always welcome here. In 1947, The Parodying Case was released in theaters, telling a gripping story directed by Alfred Hitchcock. The movie is a significant piece from classic Hollywood. It's about a wealthy and charming woman accused of murdering her husband. Throughout the trial, secrets and hidden motives emerge, keeping the audience engaged. The cast, including Gregory Peck and Alita Valley, deliver excellent performances, exploring human nature and the search for justice. The movie showcases Hitchcock's skill in crafting compelling stories. Despite its age, the parodying case still captivates audiences, reminding us of the power of a well-told story. Its themes and execution ensure its place in film history. The parodying case is a film from 1947 by Alfred Hitchcock. It's about the marriage of Anthony and Gay Keene in 1935. At first, Hitchcock wanted Robert Newton for a role, but Louis Jordan ended up playing the character leading to a name change to André Lauder, a Frenchman. In 1945, Hitchcock was asked to supervise a documentary about Nazi crimes and concentration camps. The film was supposed to have parts from different military film units, but because of Cold War events, the USSR part was taken out, leaving the project unfinished. Some footage stayed in the Imperial War Museum's collection. However, a version of the film aired as Memory of the Camps in 1984-85 in the UK and the US. The US version was shown on the PBS series Frontline on May 7, 1985. Then, in October 2014, a new documentary about the unfinished film, Night Will Fall, premiered at the BFI London Film Festival. In 1947, the movie The Parodying Case made waves in the film world. It featured one actor recognized by the American Film Institute as the 12th greatest screen legend. Later, there was a radio adaptation in 1949 with familiar actors reprising their roles. Alfred Hitchcock, the brilliant mind behind the movie, asked Italian comedy thriller writers to write the screenplay. The story centered on a New York City hotel run by an unwitting Italian immigrant family using it for criminal activities, including stealing a valuable coin. However, the Italian writers faced difficulties with the story, mainly due to language barriers. Despite its potential, Universal Studios advised Hitchcock against pursuing it. The plot and collaboration with famous actors highlight the movie's significance in Hitchcock's work. Despite challenges, the movie remains a testament to the creative process, showing Hitchcock's adaptability and persistence. In summary, The Parodying Case is a unique project in Hitchcock's career, blending suspense with human complexity. The challenges during its development provide insight into filmmaking, demonstrating the director's ability to overcome obstacles and create a captivating story. The movie The Parodying Case came out in 1947 and had Gregory Peck playing Anthony Keane. Peck's performance inspired the character of Batman in the graphic novel Kingdom Come and the comic Batman Year One. Originally, Alfred Hitchcock wanted Ronald Coleman or Lawrence Olivier for a role, but they were busy, so Peck got the part. Hitchcock had an idea for a new version of Hamlet with Cary Grant, but it fell through due to legal issues. This shows how the parodying case influenced later works and Hitchcock's creative plans. In considering roles for the parodying case, James Mason was a contender for Anthony Keane's part. The initial script, penned by James Brady, received additional dialogue from Ben Hecht. However, this version wasn't utilized due to character modifications, such as William Marsh becoming Andre Lauder. You can find this script at the IUCAT library. Beyond his film work, he gained recognition for a television commercial, endorsing a collection of classical music records titled 120 Music Masterpieces. This commercial held the title of the longest-running nationally broadcast ad in U.S. television history, airing for nearly 14 years from 1971 until 1984. Despite Williams passing on May 5, 1983, the ad continued for over a year, concluding as compact discs supplanted vinyl records. 
In the early 1950s, Alfred Hitchcock had plans to adapt David Duncan's novel The Bramble Bush into a film set in Mexico and San Francisco, intending it to follow after I confess. However, due to budget constraints and script issues, the project was shelved in favor of Dial M for Murder. Alfred Hitchcock initially wanted Ingrid Bergman for the role of the woman on trial, but she declined due to her reluctance to work with producer David O. Selznick again. The role eventually went to Alita Valley. During the filming of Lifeboat, Hitchcock struggled to come up with his usual cameo appearance. Eventually, he settled on appearing in a newspaper advertisement for weight loss, coinciding with his own weight loss at the time. The ad featured both before and after pictures with the tagline Obesity Slayer. These behind-the-scenes anecdotes shed light on Hitchcock's creative process and challenges faced during the production of The Parodying Case. The Parodying Case from 1947 was a movie directed by Alfred Hitchcock. In the late 1950s, he planned an adaptation of Henry Cecil's novel No Bail for the Judge. Audrey Hepburn was supposed to play the barrister, but she left the film due to pregnancy. Samuel A. Taylor wrote the screenplay, but Hitchcock lost interest after Hepburn's departure and changes in British law. The project was ultimately abandoned despite initial plans. In Hitchcock's earlier film, The Lodger, he made his first cameo appearance, a practice he continued in many subsequent movies. In 1964, Hitchcock considered adapting another novel, The Three Hostages by John Butchin, but found it dated and disliked the portrayal of hypnosis in film. The parodying case was significant for Hitchcock's career, though it faced challenges during production and ultimately did not come to fruition. In 1947, there's a movie called The Parodying Case starring Gregory Peck. Later on, he turned down the role of Detective Steve McGarrett in the 1968 show Hawaii Five-0, a part eventually played by Jack Lord. Peck also said no to Gary Cooper's role in High Noon because he thought it resembled his character in The Gunfighter. Surprisingly, High Noon went on to become a big hit. Peck didn't like the film Only the Valiant, thinking it was a step backward from The Gunfighter. It's worth noting that Only the Valiant was his least favorite. The whole story was, the movie The Parodying Case, made in 1947, has caught people's attention for how it may have influenced later films and its interesting backstory. Director Stanley Kramer might have gotten ideas from it for Judgment at Nuremberg in 1961, which was pointed out by Francois Truffaut during a talk with Alfred Hitchcock. The British thriller writer Dennis Wheatley had a big connection with Hitchcock. When Wheatley showed Hitchcock his book, The Forbidden Territory, in 1933, Hitchcock was really interested in making it into a movie. But because of some issues with changing studios and disagreements with studio bosses, the plan didn't happen. Even though Hitchcock tried hard to get the rights, the movie ended up being directed by Phil Rosen. It's interesting to note that Hitchcock and his wife, Alma Reville, were born just a day apart. They both were born on August 13 and 14, 1999, respectively. The parodying case isn't just a good story, but also gives us a peek into how making movies can be complicated with directors facing challenges and needing to collaborate. Its influence can be seen in later movies and has sparked talks about how it was made and what it's about.